Hello YouTube, Nathan coming at you with my 3.1 viable Queen of the Forest character. This one uses two Dream Feathers and Blade Flurry to kill. And I'm going to start off by showing you guys uh, the defensive mechanics of this character, which is almost purely evasion. Okay, It's roughly 90% 90 90 chance to evade against Izaro uh, when you use Enfeeble, the Jade Flask, and our Stib Knight. Okay? So the boss will be blinded and enfeebled. It also has the 40% chance to evade from taking uh, phase acrobatics and acrobatics as well. So uh, shortly I'm going to show you on screen the gear that I'm currently using and I'll go over what links I also have. Okay in the first dream feather there on the left you're going to see whirling blades, fortify, and summon ice golem. On the second dream feather I have Blood Rage, Ancestral Protector, and Increased Area of Effect. And now that's that gem's only in there so I can swap into the 5 link when necessary. Uh, in the helmet, I'm using Orb of Storms, Curse on Hit, Enfeeble, and Power Charge on Crit. Obviously that helmet is called Devoto's Devotion. Uh, the chest piece is a Queen of the Forest, and I have a 5 link currently. I'm running Blade Flurry. Added lightning damage, added cold damage, elemental damage with attacks, and finally, conch effect. I swap in increased area of effect when I'm mapping. The last unique I'm currently using is the Etsiri step, the boots. Inside there I have wrath, curse on hit, assassin's mark, and arctic armor. All you really need to pay attention to here is wrath and arctic armor. I use these boots for my Herald of Ice, Curse on Hit, Assassin's Mark setup when I map. Okay, so when I map, I swap out Arctic Armor for Herald of Ice. The belt I'm using is a self-found belt that's actually quite insane because this character, you know, you struggle to get the resistances. So uh, I'm using the 80 life belt with like 100 and 120 resistances total, I want to say. And the jewel inside that belt is an abyssal jewel with four lines of elemental damage to attacks okay it's the, the largest amount of le damage to attacks you could possibly get and i have three of those jewels two on the passive tree one on the belt the gloves i'm using are spiked gloves because the implicit gives you a whole bunch of damage on this in the spike gloves i'm using my gas when damage taken setup increased duration and charged dash Okay, I'm not using Charge Dash for damage, I'm only using it to traverse gaps in the Labyrinth or anywhere else. Um, on the gloves, I just have uh, some, some life, decent resistances, and flat LA damage to attacks. Alright, for the rings, I'm using... Uh, well, I'll just cover the jewelry in general, right? The ring on the left there has crafted life on it, but it has enough resistances to cap me out. Importantly, though, it has 40 strength and flat LE damage to attacks, but the strength is useful because it allows you to save points on the skill tree and invest them into more damage. So it's important to get some strength on either your gloves or at least a ring. The coral ring on the right that you see, uh, it has flat evasion, it's got some accuracy on it, it's got high life, and enough resistances to cap me, but importantly, it also has high intellect. I have 40 or more intellect on both my amulet and that coral ring, and it allows me to sustain higher level gems in my gear. The amulet, uh, like I said, it's got 44 intellect on it. It also has tier 1 crit multi, it's got tier 1 evasion percent, and it's got tier 1 life. So this amulet, it doesn't really give me the most damage in the world, but it does allow me to save a skill point on the tree by giving me 44 intellect, and it also helps me cap my evasion at 45,000 by increasing it by 20%. The flasks that you'll see are the Jade, the Silver, the Quicksilver, and the Diamond Flask. You could swap out the Silver Flask for a Stib Knight. And in fact, I recommend you do that. If you're farming casually, but you know how I do it, I like to run quick. Okay? Uh, the Silver Flask is going to net you more speed gain than the Stib Knight would, and it's quite honestly more impactful when you're trying to run through zones quickly.
So I've covered the meat and potatoes here. I've got the gear, I've got the links. This is what you need to get started. If you're interested in the passive tree or the path of building paste bin, please check the description down below. I'll provide links to all the relevant information. Uh, also, I want to tell you that I did choose two passive points when it came to the bandit quest, okay? I killed them all. If you feel like maybe taking Alira is worth it for you, then by all means do so. But I felt like having a little bit of extra life and evasion from the skill tree was a bit more worthwhile. So the rest of the video is going to contain me fighting the Guardians of the new Atlas. These guys aren't too bad and I fought them between the ranges of tier 8 and tier 11 maps I believe. Maybe tier 10, I kind of forget. I'm not going to include the Elder fight because I do not want to spoil anything, but I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. If you have any questions, um, you can ask them in the YouTube comments, but to be completely honest, I'm probably not going to answer them here. Uh, I will be streaming live uh, every day, or I'll, I'll at least try to. At least usually when I try to uh, do Uber Lab, I'll turn the stream on, have a chat, have some fun. So if you guys have questions, maybe try to catch me live on Twitch.